Hi, and welcome to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at linked lists. If you don't know what those are, don't worry. I'm going to be talking about that later in this video. But first, let's take a look at the problem. Given head, which is a reference node to a single linked list, the value of each node in the linked list is either 0 or 1. The linked list holds the binary representation of a number, and we have to return the decimal value of the number in the linked list. First, let's take a look at what linked lists are. What are linked lists? Well, linked lists are a way to store information in what we call nodes. So we can see here, this is a node, this is a node, this is a node, and this is a node. In the past, we've taken a look at binary trees, but the difference between binary trees and linked lists is that linked lists store the nodes in a linear line whereas the binary tree stored those information in a tree-like format. The first node in a linked list is what we call the head node. It has data, which is A in this case, and it has a reference to the next node. And then as we continue going to the next node, at the very last node, the node after that is going to be null. So that's when we know the linked list is going to stop because we have this value null over here. Linked list properties, if we're given a node in, inside the linked list, so let's say we're given B or C or A or D, if we're giving a root, you can access the root value by doing root.val and you can access the next val uh, value inside it the linked list by doing root.next. Now that we've learned that information about linked lists, let's see whether we can solve this problem that we were given. First, what we need to do is we need to see what value stored here. And to do that, we can go through every single value inside the linked list and store what we get in a string. So if we're, we have a linked list like 1, 0, 1, like in the example, we'll iterate through and create a string that stores 1 the first time, 0 the next time, and 1 the next time. So we have that number, and then we can convert it into the decimal value. So in order to do an iterative, iterative cycle by going through every single node, you can A, um, set up a while loop, set up a for loop, but I'm just going to do a recursive manner just because that's easier for me. In a, in a recursive, we need to create another method. So I'm just going to make it private. It's going to be static. It's not going to return anything. And I'm just going to call it iterate. And it only takes in one parameter of a list node. Don't forget that if you want to run this program yourself, don't forget to create the list node Java class. And that just is going to be that node in every position. Inside the iterative cycle, there's two conditions. Head is null and head is not null. Or if node is equal to null, then we return because we don't want to continue. If this node's not equal to null, that's what we want to consider. First, we need to create that string that's going to store the binary number. I'm going to create that string up here and I'm going to call it binary num. In the actual method that's going to run our entire program, I'm just going to make binary num equals to an empty string. Now, because we put the binary in this variable up here, we can set binary num equal to, we can plus equal the node.val. What this will do is that it will take the string and it will add the node.val to the string. Okay, great. And I'm just going to make this as this private static um, in order to make it accessible in these static methods. And then because we want this to be recursive, we're just going to iterate to node.next, which goes to the next value inside our linked list. 
Now that we've set out our recursive method, we need to call it. So over here, I'm just going to call iterate node because node's the value that we get in the parameter. And now we need to convert it into a decimal number. Now we could be a, do a while loop and then go through every value in the while loop and then convert it into decimal number, but that sounds really complicated. Because this seems like a really common thing to Java, they've luckily made this uh, this function that already does it for us. This function is is integer integer dot parse int. And what this will do is that it will take a string. So luckily, we've already created binary num and it's going to convert it into an integer. So if I just did this, what it's going to do is it's going to take the string that we have, which, which has 101, and it's just going to return 101. But we don't want that. We want it to be in a decimal. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna tell Java that this is in base two by doing a comma two. And now this tells Java, oh, this number is in base two, I need to convert it into base 10 and then return it. So then it's going to return five, which is what we want. So all I'm going to do is like remove that extra code and I'm going to click run. Now I've, created a, uh, I've already created a link list with 101. And you notice that when we run this um, code, we get five, which is what we want. So I hope that this video is helpful to you when you're programming and I hope to see you in a future video. Bye bye.